this is how you magnify it or demagnify it. Uh, if you want, if you want to do a really good at it, I suggest that you zoom in to lasso it well. And if you want to see it all, just you know, do that. Some pictures are bigger than this, so you have to zoom out to see the whole thing. This is the marquee tool. You can make boxes, and you can make circles. Then this lasso tool. You draw with it. Magnetic lasso. I'm not sure what you do with it, but it makes funny little curves everywhere. The polygonal lasso tool is the main tool I use to lasso out my pictures. And here's the quick selection tool. So anything that's the same color is selected all at once is a text tool. You use it to type. And here you can select what type of font you're using. And here you can select the size. This, you, this is to bold it, italicize it, faux italic, and to put a line through it, which is called strike through. And here's how you can do the alignment of your text and you can choose the color of your text here and you can change your text vertical horizontal and here you can warp your text like so okay so this is the cropping tool you use it to cut out any part of the picture that you don't want Remember, See? You can stop it if your arm gets tired. And to undo it, you just press Control Z. Or you just go to Edit and undo right there. Yeah. This is to make shapes. See? And this is to rotate the picture. This tool. This is to remove red eye, which apparently, which apparently this picture doesn't have. Um, this is the spot healing tool. This is, and you use it like that, and it's kind of weird. This is the pattern stamp tool. And I use it to make scan lines like, I use it to make scan lines. And you do this by going to edit, fill selection. You have to be on a certain pattern like this. And you click OK. And see, now it's got scan lines all over it. This, of course, is the eraser. You use it to erase things. And this, underneath it, is the brush tool. This is the color replacement tool. And if you run it over a picture, it'll replace it with whatever color you have selected. But it'll stay the same shade. So, in other words, if you're trying to make something white or really light dark, you can't. And this is the pencil tool. I don't usually use it, but yeah. This is the paint bucket tool. And you use it like this. You'd usually fill it to color a certain amount of space that you have selected. This right here is the gradient tool, and you use it to make one color fade into another color, like this. See? 
because you have to set it from foreground to background so that it'll turn out whatever two colors you want it as. And this these are shape tools that you can use. This is the smearing tool. And of course, you smear things with it. So then this is the dodge tool. And with the dodge tool, you can... This dodge tool. With this, you can lighten the picture. Notice the difference. And when you right click this, you can also go to the burn tool, which darkens the picture. And when I undo it, there's a big difference. And yep. That's your main amount of tools. Okay, so right now we're going to start with the basics. In other words, coloring, just coloring right now. So we start off with the polygonal lasso right here. Now you don't want to use the lasso because you have to draw it, and that's kind of difficult. And you don't want to use the magnetic lasso because it's kind of weird and hard to control. lasso, polygonal lasso, I mean. Okay, so when you're lassoing, you have to get the specific area, and you shouldn't get around it, for example, like this, where all the color is going to come off of the area. So you have to get it perfectly, like this. Okay, so after you've got it lassoed, you click this button here to make a new layer. You can go to layer and go to new and click new layer. Okay, so to color the hair. You take the brush. You can make it any size you want. I usually like mine pretty big. Then you select the color on the color swatch. You on it. Before you start coloring, you go to this right here, which says normal. Notice it. You click it and you go to multiply. So that when you color over it, as you can see, you can still see all the shading. If you leave it on normal, then it's going to look like one solid color. And I don't think any of you want that. So yeah, put it on multiply. Normally, I'd blur the hair after I color it. usually about a point six or point eight. And yeah, that's pretty much how you use the polygonal lasso and the brush tool. So you can just keep using this. Same thing with the eyes. but I'd make a new layer for the eyes so that if you mess up or blur or want to blur something you don't blur everything because different things need to be blurred different amounts since these are eyes I'd blur them less than the hair 
Of course, you can color the clothes in the exact same way you color the hair and the eyes.